What up, y'all? It's fucking first listen time, and we don't have Josh today. Bastard's in Florida. Yeah, he's out in fucking Destin, doing uh, Destiny things. Is he playing Destiny on in Destin? Dude, that would be amazing. <laughs> So anyway, today I'm a little sick. <coughs> I'm not too bad. I mean, I I just doped up on some generic ass aspirin-y shit, and because we're out of this stuff, like this stuff is really good. They're only the nighttime we're stuff. We're doing a review on medicine now. Yeah, right now we are talking about the brand new fucking meatloaf album that just came out. Not even a minute in, and there's already a fuck. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't fucking I don't know how true that. YouTube shit is with the advertiser friendly crap. I don't give a fuck. Fuck it. We all have day jobs. Shit, I don't need your YouTube money. We've been doing this shit four years. You know, you can post on Amazon now. Hmm? Yeah. No old bar, bitches. Oh, and I'm drinking some fucking New Belgium Pump Kick. This is some good ass fucking beer right here. I used to always just grab the shock top pumpkin ale shit, but this to me is a little better. He's a basic bitch. Yeah, I'm a basic <clears throat> white girl. But anyway, the new Meatloaf album. Uh, it sounds like an old withered Meatloaf. Yeah, he's using his old man voice. I don't think he has a choice. Yeah, like I wonder, man. Um, I mean, a, a lot of it just reminded me, just by his voice, not the music, but his voice, the way he was singing, how he, it almost sounded like he wanted to do his old style, but he just couldn't handle it anymore. Just like the Hoot on their last record. But you did say that Simon wrote it in a lower key for him. Or told him to sing it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like, like. But it still sounds like he couldn't sound, handle. Yeah. Like, uh, thankfully, he doesn't sound winded, like on that that Who album. Yeah. The, the, um, oh but he does when when he's doing duets, because they have the original women who did Paradise by the Dashboard Light on here with him, the lady that did it on the album and the lady who sang it live with him. When he's fucking singing with them. They upstaged the crap out of him. Like, he... You can barely hear him, man, but they're sounding fucking great. But, uh, you know, I have really, really low expectations for this album because... I remember me, finding out about it. Yeah. And only being interested because Steinman was involved. Exactly. That's the only reason I bought it was because all the songs were written by Jim Steinman. But they even made sure to put it on the cover. Yeah, well, all of them do that, though. Songs by Jim Steinman. Not all songs by <laughs> Jim Steinman. <laughs> but, uh, like, I mean, dude, I first picked up Bad Out of Hell, what, in 2004? Sex is what it was. And I fucking became hooked, so I bought Bad Out of Hell, too. Those are the only two that I heard. I fucking uh, love them. what they were. And then Bad Out of Hell, Hell 3 came out. And I was super fucking hyped. I was super fucking hyped. I went and bought it. And, like, you know, I may be a little hard on it on my Monster episode, but the thing is, is the Steinman songs on there are fantastic. And the Desmond Child songs just don't fucking match. What did Desmond Child do? He wrote fucking... Li is it Living on a Prayer? And he wrote, God. I was made for loving you, for fucking kiss. <coughs> I mean, <sighs> so I he don't... wrote most of the worst songs. Yeah, that's, that's something like bring up on 80s. that episode. I mean. You didn't bring that up? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah, I damn sure did. But, uh, the album is good for what it is. Like, there's a lot of songs on there that I love, but the whole album is a great <coughs> I can, I can, I like every single song on the first two bands. But Bat 3, I'm like, oh, let's skip this shit. But, uh, so then I bought a Hank Cool Teddy Bear back when it came out. 
and there's no songs by Jim Steinman on there. And it fucking sucks. It's been probably two years, three years since I've listened to it. I could not fucking get into that album. And how do you fucking have an album like that from Meatloaf that has people like Hugh Laurie? Fucking, what is he doing on there? He's playing piano. So you got fucking... Really? Um, yeah. I mean, he's a fucking musician, man. I'm sure he's really good at that, but... I mean... Man. Hugh, the thing is, is like, Hugh when, Laurie is too awesome to just play piano. That's what I'm saying. If you want... If I'm hearing Hugh Laurie's name, I'm like, okay, what else is he doing? Seriously, man. He's not just playing piano. What, does, he, does he speak? Does he have a... Does he play house for a minute? <laughs> what does he do? I mean, really, dude. He could be, a. Uh, the foppish dandy from uh, Black Adder. He could do <coughs> a bit of Fry and Lori. But all he's doing is piano. And Jack Black is on there. And like, to me, I never remember what he did. I never fucking remember what he did. And then here's a big question about Hank Cool Teddy Bear. Is it supposed to be Bad Out of Hell 4? Because on the back of the cover, the the number four is written in new numero Romans. <laughs> Who knows? And on the cover, the cover features the fucking badass motorcycle riding dude from all the bad albums. Only he's fucking dead. The motorcycle is crashed. There's fire everywhere. There's a lady holding his fucking skeleton. Is it really? Yeah. And the skeleton's wearing the blue jeans. Same shit he was wearing on the Bat 3 cover. So, did this motherfucker lose his battle with whatever Bat Beast was on that cover? <coughs> so, is it supposed to be a Bat of Hell 4? It's not. It's its own concept album. But why do that? Why why is the cover a bad out of hell for, but none of the music is? What 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 are you trying to say? It sucks. So yeah. I never heard the album that came after that. Hell and Hand. What's the one with a soldier on the cover? Um maybe the one from like ninety five or two thousand three. Uh the one one is called Couldn't Have Said It Better? I don't know if it's a soldier, it, I don't know, it kind of looks like a 1940s World War II nurse, like, uh, or, or like Andrew's sisters at a USO show. But anyway, so that prize fight lover was a bonus track on that album. Wow. So that's a bonus track on all Meatloaf albums. But anyway, this album, because of all that, I mean, Jim Steinman's a badass songwriter. I'm not even gonna lie. What the hell is this motherfucker doing? He's got Rob Cavallo on there. Who is that? The Green Day producer. Oh yeah, which one is that? Love is not real next time you stab me in the back. Featuring Brian May and Steve Vai. Are you looking at Hank Cool Teddy Bear? Yeah. Yeah. Steve Vai is on that album. Like a Rose. Featuring Jack Black. Written by Kevin Kaddish and Jake Shearer. Justin Hawkins from The Darkness writes some shit on that album. I believe in thing called love. I can't, I can't even, I'm so fucking sick. Desmond Child writes a song. Yeah. With Billy Falcon and John Bon Jovi. What? Oh. They, they, Elvis in Vegas. Bon Jovi wrote that song. With a dude that writes Bon Jovi songs. It's my life. Justin Hawkins is on that song with Rob Cavallo. It's now or never. I ain't gonna live forever. James Michael. James Michael. That's our dad. James Michael. Yeah, that's what's funny. 
Mike and James. Monday. Oh yeah, like Mike and James Monday, <laughs> shit. And so anyway, I had, because of all that shit, I had highly, highly low expectations for this album. But like Zach just mentioned earlier, the fact that Jim Steinman wrote everything had me intrigued. And, uh, I bought it. And you know what? I am loving the fuck out of it, man. This album is the shit. This album is fucking good. And it's, it's gotta be because Simon, man. Simon knows how to use meatloaf right. He knows how to make his meatloaf. <laughs> I mean, He's fuck. A good cook. I mean, shit. And everyone's like doing their all on here, man. The fucking the Neverland Express are playing their asses off. Fucking some great ass Steinman songs. Uh, you've got a couple from this is this is Steinman shit right here. I'm gonna take songs that I wrote years ago and then put them on here. But you have "Loving You" is a dirty job, but Justin somebody's Hawkins gotta do it. Vocals and guitar. Oh really? Yeah. That shows you how long it's been since I listened to that. Well, "Loving You" is a dirty job, but somebody's gotta do it. It's from some other album. And I know more... Who did that? Huh? Who did, originally did that song? I have no clue. Um, it's on there. If you look at the album on Wikipedia, it tells you where. Uh, the song More is from the Sisters of Mercy from album. Dallas, Texas. I had no idea Steinman wrote a Sisters of Mercy song. What? What? That's like if Steinman wrote for Susie and the Bitch. It's heavy metal. <laughs> Who? Wikipedia. It says Meatloaf is heavy metal? I don't know. Rock, hard rock, heavy metal, progressive rock. I could I can get behind I would call prog. it theater rock. Yeah, I can get I could say theater rock, I could say prog. I couldn't say straight up heavy metal. There's heavy metal I shit in there. Say heavy metal. You don't even really get heavy metal until Bat Three that, that I've heard. Yeah, you got some of that shit. There's a little heavy metal on here. But yeah, I mean, dude, the dude's more varied. Cause you get, you get like. Michael. He was in Wade's World. Oh, was he? He played Tiny. He he played Bitch Tit Bob. Uh, but no. Robert Paulson is his name in Fight Club. <laughs> Bob had bitch tits. Um, uh, what? Well, I don't even remember what I'm saying. Um, he's been in a shit ton of fucking movies, dude. I remember he was the the little cop guy in Crazy in Alabama. He's been in a shit ton of TV shows too. But uh, I don't know. This album was pretty fucking. He was good. in Ghost Hunters. Really? We gotta find my bat. Okay, WWE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on WWE. Was he really? Raw. Oh no. Glee. <sighs> so anyway, the album starts off with Who Needs the Youth? Or no, Who Needs the Young? And to me, it starts off great with this sweet ass 1950s rock and roll blues riff. Then it goes into this doo wop shit. Then it turns into this. Like, 1920s and 30s sort of juke joint speakeasy jazz number. Really fucking good. He's got a lot of albums with fire backgrounds. Yeah, that's, I guess that's the standard. So that's what Weird Al was making fun of on his album cover. Hell, they kind of almost took that fucking, they almost ripped off the Weird Al. Because yeah. you got the four horsemen of the apocalypse coming yeah. out of fire. Weird Al was on one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so then the second track is a big-ass epic called uh, Going All the Way. Um, a song in six movements featuring Ellen Foley and Carla DeVito. They're the women who sang Paradise by the Dashboard Light. So in a way, could this be a sequel to Paradise? If so, it's I don't think it's as good as Paradise. But as a song on its own, it's really fucking good. It goes a, a couple places, gets pretty fucking proggy. 
gets really, it's really big and it's really grand. And uh, the women on that song just blow Meatloaf out of the water. He just sounds like some old wind, like not winded, but just some old man sitting in a chair, whereas the women sound more full and bright. He just sounds like, uh. And after that, you got Speaking in Tongues, which I swear to God has to be a blowjob song. Because he's saying things like, to make the mighty oak grow. Loving Using Dirty Job appeared on a Bonnie Tyler. Bonnie Tyler. The same lady who did Total Eclipse of the Heart. Uh, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, but speaking in tongues has to be like a blowjob song. Because he says, the mighty oak won't grow. Or you gotta plant a little seed. And he's saying things like that. And like... Like, you know your words, but body language is key or something, and then you go into an erection of the heart. Like, that shit had me laughing so hard, because I'm like, that is amazing, an erection of the heart. I don't know if that is clever or just so ridiculous that it's funny. Like, it's kind yeah, of both. wrote four songs on this album. For Bonnie Tyler. Oh shit. I think the one before it. He, he produced both of them. Huh. But then Loving You is a Dirty Job, but Somebody's Gotta Do It is really fucking good. Love the shit out of that song. Then the song Sylvaneers is. John Fogarty, sorry. Who? John Fogarty. I have no idea who that'd be. Sean Fogarty. But, uh, Sylvaneers is really fucking good. It's pretty big and grand and catchy. Uh, then you get, like, this is what I call, like, this album has, like, two halves. The first five tracks are, like, they're very big and grand, very theater-esque. Just normal Steinman-y kind of shit, if you're familiar with Steinman's work. Then you get the song, Only When I Feel... Which is like, kind of emo, like the music is good, the song is good, but he's like, it only hurts when I feel, or some shit like that. No, it's only like, here it says it's a minute and 56 seconds long. It's sort of like a break, because after this, everything gets pretty fucking heavy, and uh, pretty metal. After here you get the song More, which is very, uh, very symphonic metal meets industrial in a way. Which would make sense because it was written for Sisters of Mercy, you know? It just sounds like some old goth shit. But with Meatloaf on there, uh, then you got the song Gods, which is badass. Gods is fucking awesome. And then we get the track that had me, to me, had the most what the fuck moment, but at the same time, that was pretty goddamn cool moment. The song Skull of Your Country. He's singing, you know, talking about things. How do you bury the skull of your country? But then it starts building up, and then you get this woman going, Turn around. And Meatloaf will sing, Turn around. Meatloaf will sing, and while I'm listening to it, I'm like, That's It's like, Christmas time in the city. city. I'm like, this is that fucking Total Eclipse shit. And then it goes, Turn around, bright eyes. I was like, what the fuck is he doing? What the fuck? And then I was like, you know what? That shit works. He fucking just took shit. You're kidding me. Well, Sorry. I'm looking at Bonnie Tyler in uh, one of her 95 records. She did two out of three ain't bad. We have to hear it. I love you. Uh, or no. I want you. I need you. But there ain't no way I'm ever gonna love you. So don't be sad. Cause two out of three ain't bad. That song is great, man. Uh, but yeah, so then I was like, you know, that's crazy, dude. Like, he's gonna put that Total Eclipse of the Heart in this other fucking song. 
but it totally fucking works. Then the album ends with Train of Love, which is awesome as a motherfucker. Like, it's very fucking driving. And uh, at the end, you get this sweet ass slide guitar shit. Fuck it. You ready? Huh? Bunny timing. Oh, uh, yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? I don't know, it's a song that does not. They don't need this techno it shit. It doesn't work like this. Uh uh, I've had oh. enough. Did you believe in love? That's exactly what I was thinking of. Jesus oh, Christ. That's pretty that is, awful. That is. Who okayed that? Yeah, who, who said? Who, who, yeah, who went to Body Tyler and said, you know what? Was Steinman in the studio that day and said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to let you do two out of three. But, uh, you can only do it. You, you can do two out of three. Right said Fred. <laughs> I want you to do two out of three ain't bad, but you got to do it badly. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, you got to we'll, make we'll a good song on the awful. Roxbury soundtrack. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. I two want out of three you. ain't bad. Like, that is not a song you dance to. Oh, my God, dude. You don't dance hilarious. to that song. If you do, um, it's slow dancing. Really, it's like an ironic love song. Jesus Would that be irony? Would that be irony? That probably isn't irony. I've got nobody. After Alanis Morissette, nobody knows what irony is anymore. Irony is a universal definition. <laughs> no, Alanis Morissette just didn't know what it meant. But now everyone doesn't know what it means. If you hear that song, you completely forget all irony rules. But anyway, Train of Love is awesome, but then there's three bonus tracks, and the only one to me worth noting is a cover of the fucking, to me, one of the greatest songs of the 60s, For What It's Worth, by uh, Stephen Stills, old buddy from Buffalo Springfield, and Crosby, Stills, and Nash, that motherfucking stop, chill, ran, what's that sound, everybody look what's going down, boom, boom. Yeah, that song is fucking awesome to me. And Meatloaf and his buddies do it justice. It's pretty fucking good. And on here it says that it's featuring uh, Stephen Stills, but I don't hear him. I just hear Meatloaf and the the female Ooz. And then after that you've got Prize Fight Lover. It's a good song. Eh. But then you've got I Would Do Anything For Love, But I Won't Do That, featuring... Um, that's a decent... A Melda May version, but... Yeah, man. it's a decent version. It's more orche orchestral than the original. I still like the original better because it's like orchestra meets rock, and it, to me it just works. Damn. That was released 20 years ago today. Yeah. Social Distortion. Oh, yeah. But uh, I fucking love the shit out of this album. To me, there is not one single weak track, which is uh, kind of surprising. Real surprising. I mean, but really though, Batman... Batman. Bat it is Batman Day. <clears throat> Batman Out of Hell 2 and Batman Out of Hell 1, to me, don't have any weak tracks. Like, I love Bat Out of Hell 2. Bat 1 is great. Yeah, man. Bat 1 is great, too. It was only like seven songs. Six or seven. Yeah, man. And it fucking... It, it rocks. God, dude. It fucking rocks. And uh, Bat fucking 2, man. I, I don't know, I like Bat 2, but it kind of feels like it drags. It does, but I don't know what it is, dude. Like, like some of the songs out here that you could say drag, like, especially the going all the way. Like, I don't know what it is, man, about Long Steinman songs. If they drag, I'm with it. Because, like, I don't know, he comes with, he thinks of the right melodies, the right fucking, just everything that, like, if it He's drags, so Long Steinman's dick, he tried his own band. One time, he called it Midnight Sky. Oh, uh, yeah, that bullshit. <laughs> that was some time when you want to be bullshit. Just piano, guitar rock. If you go to MySpace and type in Midnight Sky, you'll find it, but I actually lost all of the masters to those songs when the truck got stolen. Oh, well. Forward is the way. So, well, I mean, what did you think of this, man? We sat here and listened to the whole motherfucker. It's good, I wasn't bored. It's good, you weren't bored. 
some of the tracks made me chuckle. Yeah. I like the tongue-in-cheek way that Steinman writes his lyrics. Like the... What was that one? Loving You, Dirty Job. Yeah, job. yeah man. Gotta do it. Like, he has the perfect songs with, like, parenthesis titles. Like, Loving You is a Dirty Job, but someone's got to do it. Fuck him. Good girls go to heaven, bad girls go everywhere else, or some shit like that, you know? Fucking, uh, he's always got, like, the coolest parenthesis titles. Except for Into the Frying Pan and Into the Fire. Like, nah, that's obvious. But, uh, shit, dude. I love the fuck out of this album. Go fucking check it out. I mean, you know... I know a lot of people that don't like Meatloaf. Old buddy John doesn't like really doesn't get into Meatloaf. Charlie doesn't oh, really get into Meatloaf. Shit. Uh, but I fucking I've dug Meatloaf for about twelve years now, and uh, well, I was about to say he hasn't let me down, but goddamn it, he has. He has. Hang cool, Teddy Bear. Uh, but hey, if it's him and Steinman, we're fucking good to go. What is this? I thought it was your shit. It's pretty rad. Come on, that's your Midnight Sky thing, right? Hell no. It's like an eyeball with a moon and a star. It's purpley. How did you spell it? M M I D N I W H G I T night or however you spell midnight and sky. It is one word. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they deactivated the count because it hasn't been active for like 10 years. Or maybe... But anyway, go check it out. It's totally fucking worth it. Smoke break time, and then we're going to talk about the new Ghost EP. Bye!